with that being said, I hope your day is tremendous yeah. and exuberant yeah. and flabbergasting. That's my father's word. He would use that word as dad. You can't use that word, but flabbergasting is a good word. All right? So stand to your feet. And we want to give thanks unto the Lord. Does anybody want to give thanks unto the Lord? Come on, give God a hand time to pray. Unto the Lord for his goodness to me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness to me. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Help me out, fire. Oh, give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for his goodness to me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness. To glorify his name, we come to glorify his name. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. We come to glorify it. One more time now, we come to glorify his name. We come to glorify. Oh, we come to glorify. His name. Yes, we come to glorify. His name. We come to glorify.
glory. And Father, as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, we also come in your courts with praise. We come to bless your name, to lift you up. We are the sheep of your pastures. We thank you, Father, for bringing us one more time together. The psalmist said in the scripture, Behold, how blessed ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. lesson for today reading will come from John the 10th chapter the first 10 verses and the scripture reads verily verily I say unto you yes. he that enters not by the door into the sheep into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same is the thief and a robber but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, hear his voice. Right. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things that they were, he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And that ever time before, ever came, that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, mm -hmm. but the sheep did not hear right. them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Mm. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. I come that you might have life and that they may, might have it more abundantly. Yes. So ends yes. the reading yes. of the scripture. You may be seated. We're now going to do our congregational hymn. Ask you to join in and let's praise the Lord. This song goes out to the mothers that are out there. That should be everybody say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. I'm not going to stop until somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If you're a mother, you still love it, you should be saying praise the Lord. 
Because if it had not been for him, you would not be here. Come on, somebody, give God some glory. Come on, give him some glory. I'm not going nowhere until you give him some glory. Come on, give him some glory. Oh, 
look in, you know how happy I would be. But it's gonna mean so much to me. I could hear my mother pray. Amen. We thank the choir for the music. Thank you. Um, at this time, we're going to have our offering. With the ushers. Worship God in our offering. Eternal God, our Father. giving. May the Lord bless. Now we're going to prepare for a special presentation, I guess by First Lady and, and uh, Sister Oliver for the mothers for the day. We do wish the mothers a happy Mother's Day and you fathers who have been mothers, God bless you too. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, and my name is Hattie Middleton, and this hat is in honor of my mother. We give thanks. That is a song that's been resonating with me for the last few months, and we give thanks for our mothers, because if it were not for them, not only would we not have birth, but I doubt if 90% of us would be in this place. So on today, we honor mothers. The scripture tells us to honor thy mother and father, and yes, fathers, we honor you and we thank you for every gentleman who's here today because we know that you're sharing with us in the honor of mothers. Mothers, you have stood strong. You have sacrificed. When there was no more chicken to be given, you ate the bones. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your patience. And above all, we thank you for your love of God. You may not have been a biological mother, but you could have been a foster mother. You could have been the big sister mom. You could have been the auntie. You could have been the godmother. For whatever role you played, we want you to stand to be recognized. Would you please stand so that Carries may honor you? Yeah. Please stand. Mothers, sisters, godmothers, we thank you. We thank you. And as you leave the service today, we ask that you select a carnation to take home with you in memory of this day and our love for you. You may be seated. The other part of that scripture says, honor thy mother and thy father that their days may be long upon this earth. And you know what? He has honored four women of Carey's Baptist Church to reach the age of 90. So at this point, we'd like to ask Mother Moore, Mother Lovett, Mother Rose Hobson, and Mother Gladys Clark to please stand. And at this time, Carrie's wants to say, we love you, and there's someone coming towards you. Um, Mr. Oliver, would you help us out, please, brother? Thank you very much. There are those who are coming to you with the token of our love and know that you do not look 90. We thank you for your love and your service to God and to our church. And then there
there are those who have continued to give service. And we can't say thanks to everybody by token, but we can certainly say there is one lady here who has been faithful through the transition of several ministers, pastors, leaders. And that is our very own Sister Reverend Evelyn Staten. Would you please stand? We thank you and we love you, Sister Staten, for all you do and for your faithfulness. May you be blessed eternally. And last but not least, there's this person who's always initiating something to the point that we kind of collided on this plan for the, the Mother's Day service this morning. Our own First Lady Choice. The lovely flowers that you're wearing reflects the time when we used to, at our church, were red for our living mothers and white for those who've gone on. And I know that hearts are heavy today. When we heard that last song, Sister Sexton, I know it was fresh. When we heard that last song and we were having our white flowers, there was something about that. But Sister Choice, we want you to know that we appreciate you, your initiate, the way you initiate, the way you give from your heart without asking for anything. And because you're such a giving person, we want you to have this flower in honor of our love for you and all that you do. <laughs> and going on with her initiative, you're about to see a slideshow. And who did it? First Lady Choice. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the slide presentation. Thank you again. Let the church say amen. amen. Right before our choir come, amen. We praise God, amen, first of all, for God is God and beside him there is none other. As Miss Oliver says, we know that this day is filled with all kind of emotions, amen. May the 9th, 2006, I received a call in England that my mother had passed on. 17 years later, we're still doing what God has ordained us to do. But for anyone who has a mother, amen, I always like to explain, there was an old woman told me a long time ago, the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father, and thy days will be long upon the earth. And the word of God never said what kind of mother and father you would have, but it says that you are to honor it, honor them. So I praise God for all our mothers in the room. Again, come on, give God a hand clap of praise for all our mothers. <laughs> Whether you birthed a child, or whether you was a surrogate mother, amen, somewhere down the line, 
you have blessed someone in their life, amen, tremendously. And so we praise yes. God for this morning, amen. After our choir sings this morning, we're going to invite the first lady to come up this morning. She's going to minister on behalf of our Mother's Day, amen. And you give God the honor and glory for her. Come on, reach your hand out to her right now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this lady of God that she would minister the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. So with all of the children of mothers that may be in the congregation,
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's me standing this morning to bring the word of the Lord today. For today is Mother's Day. All over the nation, mothers are being honored and celebrated today, and rightfully so. And here at Carrie's, we are following suit. Everybody looks so good in your flowers. And the, the slideshow, it really did bless my heart. Mothers and daughters, y'all know that I am the CBC paparazzi. And um, so I know you're wondering, how did she get those pictures? I'm also a Facebook, um, Facebook surfer. So God has his ways, so I'm able to see what you're doing and, and be happy about it. So thank you all for allowing me to be the paparazzi and highlight all the beauty that's here at Carrie's Baptist Church. Um, so I want to thank Pastor, Dr. Reverend Dr. Choice for allowing us this time to do so and um, seeing, seeing me fit for the master's use this morning. For up here is serious business, y'all. You don't play up here, you know. Amen. This is sanctified area here. Amen. When you stand up here, you got a purpose to do. This is the pulpit. This is the place where when you're standing up here, you're supposed to be able to help somebody, pull somebody out the pit. Mm -hmm. So this is serious business up here. So I don't take it lightly. I appreciate the opportunity. I know that this is, this is sacred ground here. So the pulpit. So I want to thank you, Pastor, for that. I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity. And I'm also grateful for all the ministries here that work behind the scene and also those that work on Sunday morning for, for allowing the work of the ministry to go forth. So I want to thank everybody. I know Pastor calls it out by name, but I'm, but I'm a little nervous, so I don't want to miss anybody. So I want to just thank you for all that you do behind the scenes for the work of the ministry that we can lift up Jesus. I also want to um, personally, publicly acknowledge my honey, yeah, the father of my children. I know I've acknowledged pastor, but I got to acknowledge my husband too. You know, being a pastor's wife, it can be a slippery slope if you're not careful. I got to know which one I'm talking to at 102 Foster Road because both of them live there. But if both of them don't answer me the same. So I got to acknowledge both of them this morning. So I want to acknowledge my husband. Amen. The pastor come by on Sundays, but he don't do nothing. But because he's been preaching, so I want to acknowledge my husband. I thank my husband for his support. And I want to thank my children, my sidekick. Zoe, she was prom queen last night, y'all. Yeah. Yes. That's my sidekick. So I want to thank you, Zoe, for all that you do for me. Even when I'm uptight, I want to thank you, okay? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I also want to acknowledge um, all those who may find this day difficult, not having their dear mothers physically here. You know, God sees you. He's the only one that promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. But know that as long as you're alive, your mama still lives. Remember that. As long as you are here, your mama still lives. And God, he is able to comfort you as we give honor where honor is due. Amen? Amen. Well, let's get, prepare our hearts for the word this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you asking that you create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit, Lord. I ask that you would encourage the hearts of your people through my words. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight this morning. Bring back to my remembrance all that you've showed me in the word that you in heaven may be glorified and your people edified this Mother's Day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, let's get into it. The title of my message today is Dear Mother, God Sees You. I thought it would be good to come from that mother-to-mother -mother perspective this morning since it's Mother's Day. I know... Uh, I know about um, every now and then, 
I don't know about y'all, but every now and then, every now and then, it's good to get encouragement from those who know what you're going through, those who knows your situation, those who've been down that road. Yes. Every now and then, it brings a bit of credibility yes. to the situation when you get encouragement from someone who knows what you're going through. Y'all know, preachers listen to preachers. Teachers hear from teachers. Mr. Willie J, military folk listen to military folk. It's good to get that encouragement from somebody that knows what you're going through. So this morning, we're gonna hear mother to mother, if that's all right. Now, if you're not a mother, that does not give you permission to turn me off, okay? Okay, because as I know it, whenever you're talking about a mother, you're talking about a child. And if I know correctly, every person in here is a child of a mother. So there is something for us all to get from the word this morning. All right? All right. So since it's Mother's Day, we're going to talk a little while to some mothers. Um, I want to make sure I stay on track. Help me, Lord. Y'all praying? If y'all praying, I'm speaking. All right. All right. All right. So as, it, as the permission gives to hear when it comes to pertaining to mothers, it benefits a child and a mother. Mother and children go hand in hand. Our foundational text today is found in Psalms 34, 15, 17 through 19. And it reads, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their trouble. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as the contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Dear mother, God sees you. God sees mothers today, for the day is Mother's Day. It doesn't matter what state of motherhood you find yourself in, God sees you. Well, first lady, how do you know? How do you know? I'm gonna prove it in the word that we're gonna speak to four mothers this morning that's gonna support our foundational text. God sees the single mother. How do you know? Yes, I know we don't talk about single mothers that often in church that much. Those mothers that's raising children or, or a child without a husband or unmarried, for whatever the reason, God sees the single mother. Yeah. Well, how do you know? Doing the study, doing my study, Hagar told me so. Y'all know the story. It's over in Genesis. You know, Hagar worked for Sarah. Okay. Sarah got caught up in an entanglement with a married situation, a married husband and wife. Y'all know the story. She ended up with a baby, and Sarah didn't want to deal with the plan at hand anymore. So, so Hagar found herself put out. As we would say, she was out in them streets with the baby, not knowing what to do and nowhere to go. Y'all know the story. It's in the text up there. Genesis 21, 14 and 19. You know it says that Abraham put Sarah, I mean put Hagar out. She had to depart. The Bible tells us in 15, and the water skins was used up. What he had gave her was gone. She was out in the streets with a child. Every, some things are our fault. And you gotta take ownership for what's your fault. But I'm here to tell you, single mother, that everything ain't your fault. Come on. Amen. Everything can't be your fault. Amen. God sees the single mother. Yes. So here we see, Hagar was perplexed. She had ran out of the water, ran out of food, didn't know which way to go. The Bible says in 16, then she went and sat across from him a distance of about the bow shot. She said to herself, let, not, let me not see the death 
of the boy. She was still a mother, single mother. She was still a mother, and she was concerned about the welfare of her child. Whether having a husband, whether having a boo boy, whether having somebody to help her, she was still concerned, and she did not know what to do. But I thank the Lord that the Bible says that they heard the lad cry. When, the, when God hears your children's cry, he hears the mother's cry. Come on, somebody. So the Bible says God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of, the, of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What wails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. Arise up, the lad, and hold him with your hand, and I will make him a great nation. God sees the single mother. God saw Hagar in her situation. And the Bible says that God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water God provided for her. In the middle of them streets, not knowing what to do, God sees the single mother. God provides for the single mother, for all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. We better believe that. So I don't know if you know any single mothers, but if you do, please let them know that God sees them. Not only does he see, but he hears the cry of your children. We're talking about mothers today. Mother to mother, Hagar lets us know that God sees the single mother. God also sees the barren mother. Well, how do you know? How do you know? What is a barren mother? Well, I'm glad you asked. What's a barren mother? A barren mother is a woman that has motherly character that desires a child, but does not have one. Now, I'm not talking about the women that don't want no kids. I'm not talking about the women that done fix some things that they won't have no kids. But I'm talking about the mother that has a desire to have a baby and has not one. I want you to know that God sees you. How do you know? Well, I asked Hannah during my study, and Hannah said, y'all know the story. Hannah was married, and her husband loved her. It's in the scripture. That's going to put up my little text so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I want y'all to know what I'm saying. Hannah, y'all know the story. She was married. Her husband loved her. But the Bible says that the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord had closed her womb. But her husband still loved her. But the Lord had closed the womb. Y'all know Hannah, she had things because her husband gave her a double portion. But she did not have what she desired, was a baby. God sees the barren woman. It goes on to say that the, her rivals was picking at her because she didn't have a child. Now, I don't know if the rivals was picking at her because she didn't have a baby or where they were picking at her because her husband still loved her, even though she didn't have a baby, okay? But the Bible says it was God that closed up her wombs, and she, hey, Hannah found herself depressed. She was sad in a countenance, bitter in a spirit. Y'all know Sometimes when you have some desires and you don't think God is hearing you, it makes you sad sometimes. She was in a state of depression. You can walk around doing your day, but you can still be depressed. You can see the countenance on your face. She was bitter because she didn't have a baby. God sees the barren woman. God sees the barren woman. How do you know? The Bible says that she was praying. She did not eat. She just prayed and cried, prayed and cried. And she was praying out of her bitterness, out of the anger of her situation. And the Bible said a preacher man saw her as she was praying and thought that she was drunk, right? And she said, no, I am not drunk. She's just hard. She's just sad in her spirit. So she asked the Lord about, she asked the Lord to have mercy on her. And then the preacher man, by the way of the Lord, told her to go in peace, 
that God heard her cry. Now what I like about that, that God hears the barren woman, that after that it says in verse 18 that your handmaiden found favor in your sight. And so the woman went her way and, and her face was no longer sad. So that lets me know that when the barren woman really heard the man of God and believed what he said, her countenance changed. Come on, barren woman, fix your face, for God sees you. God sees the barren woman. That's good news today. So I don't know if you know someone that still want babies these days. But if they do, let them know that God sees them. God sees the barren woman. God sees the barren woman, and he will provide. Y'all know the rest of the story. Not only did she receive from the man of God the word that the Lord had spoke, but she made a promise to the Lord, and she fulfilled her promise, and the Lord fulfilled his. And Samuel grew up to be great. When God hears the prayers of a mother, he hears the prayers of a child. When God hears the prayers of a mother, children are blessed. Children are benefit by the prayers of the mother. Not only does God hear the single mother and sees the single mother, not only does God see the barren mother, God sees the mourning mother. How do you know, First Lady? How do I know? How do, you know? Let me hear. How do I know? On, well, during my study time, on, Naomi, Mother Naomi told me. Y'all yes, know the story. Yes, sir over in Samuel. Naomi was a mother who had suffered many losses. She had a lot of losses in her life. Y'all know she and her husband lived in a foreign land. Her husband died, so therefore she was widowed, and her kids and her was going on. And the Bible says that not only did her husband die, that her sons died too. Lord, have mercy. We're talking about a mourning mother. A mother that's done lost a lot in her life. Done been through some hard times. Done seen some situations that no mother want to see. She lost not only one baby, but she lost both of her sons. And they wasn't babies, they were adult children. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord sees the mourning mother. Y'all know the story. She was bitter in her countenance. She had lost a lot. She still had those daughter-in-laws. She had made up in her mind that she was going to go on back home and just live out of days because the Lord had, done, had dealt bitterly with her. You know, when she, she, when she got there, they said, is that Naomi? And she said, don't call me Naomi. For no, Naomi means pleasant. She said, <clears throat> let me drink some more water. I'm a, I'm a, I love Carrie's cup. <laughs> okay. I feel my help coming now. Okay? Amen. Amen. So when she got there, they said, is that Naomi? She said, no, don't call me that no more. Call me Mara. For I'm in a state of bitterness. God has done bitterly with me. And you know, sometimes when we lose some things, we don't understand what's going on. We're by ourselves, we're widowed, and our children, we've seen our children um, pass away, and we can feel like God doesn't see us. We can feel like God doesn't see us. But how do you know? Naomi tells us in the word. Y'all know the story. She had a um, daughter-in-law that just wouldn't leave her alone. Sometimes you want to be left alone when you're going through your losses. Just leave me alone. Let me do my mourning. Let me be this way. But God sent her daughter-in-law, Ruth, not to leave her alone. <clears throat> Y'all know the story. Ruth said when she told them to leave her so she can go on and be at peace with what she's been dealt. Ruth says, no, ma'am, I need you. God saw that she that morning mother still had some mothering to do. <clears throat> There's still some mothering for morning mothers to do. For Ruth said, no, where you go, I'm gonna go. Your people are my people. 
Your God will be my God. I need you to give me some direction. I, you have taught me about your God, and I want to stay. And so Naomi found herself having to give some guidance to Ruth. And the rest of the story goes on to say that Ruth, the child, she heard Naomi. She listened to her. She listened to the guidance of Mother Naomi. And y'all know at the end of the story, she got a Na Naomi was given a kinsman redeemer through Ruth. And at the end of that um, Ruth chapter, it says that Naomi says that her daughter-in-law Ruth was better than seven sons. All right, somebody. God sees the mourning mother. He sees the mourning mother. He hears your cry. He sees what you're going through. But he will provide for you. He will if you keep on living. Because as long as you're alive, there's mothering for you to do. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. There's some children looking for your direction. There's some people that you can pour in. God hears the mourning mother. God also hears this morning, God hears the faithful mother. The faithful mother. God hears the faithful mother. Now, I like this one, Pastor. Now, how do I know? How do I know? God hears the faithful mother. Now, this is real, real good. This come on down Chapel 1615 Chapel Rose Street right here. The faithful mother. For we know in Timothy, <clears throat> the book of Timothy, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Paul lets us know that God hears the faithful mother. Now, y'all got to walk with me on this one, okay? This comes down my street right here. Um, Timothy is a, Paul is a mentor to Timothy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, this really blessed my heart because Grandmama Lois and his mother, Eunice, um, is walking down our street this morning. That's how I know, through Grandma Lois and Mother Eunice. Now, we got some faithful grandmothers up in here, and we got some faithful mothers. So the Bible lets us know in Timothy that, um, that Grandmother Eunice, no, Grandmother Lois and Mother Eunice, they were faithful. What faithful mean? They was full of the faith. They was full of the faith. How do you know? Over in 2 Timothy 1, 3 through 7, it says, I thank God whom I serve with pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desire you to see, being mindful of your tears. I want you to think about that. That I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith, the genuine faith that is in you, which dwells first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of, of hands. For God has not given you, given us <coughs> a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So what am I saying here? See, these faithful mothers, now this Timothy is grown. He's an adult child. This time to walk into his purpose, okay? And it's apparently through the scripture that he's got some anxieties going on, okay? Now, so here I'm talking to mothers that got grown children, okay? That you know that they are destined for greatness, but we can tell in the text that Timothy was a bit timid right. about what he had That's to do. Right. Right. And sometimes as we have grown children and we know what the great things that they're called to do, as a mother, it perplexes our heart mm -hmm. that they are not settled in what they're called to do. For we know that they know the word. The Bible says that he, was, he had grew up in the word because his grandmother and his mother was faithful. They taught him the word. Now, he had a daddy, too. He was from Greek, but we ain't talking about daddies today. We're talking about mothers, okay? So the Bible says that his, his grandmother and his mother, okay, that they taught him the way of the Lord. And so here we have Timothy that's been called for greatness. 
that he was a little timid in what he's done, that what he was to do. And because of, I would say, that faithful mother and grandmother, God stepped in and intervened and gave him a mentor by the name of Paul. Come on, first lady. And sometimes Come on. our children, don't, our adult children, don't always listen to the great counsel right. of the mother right. and the grandmother. Even though they know it's right, sometimes it has to come by another way. For the Bible says that one waters, one plants, one waters, and God gets the increase. Right. So I'm thankful today that God put some mentors in the adult children's life to lead them on the way. Faithful mothers, we can count on that. So God here, because of the faithful mothers, he had Paul as a mentor. Paul encouraged Timothy in the Lord. He said, fear not, for God has not given you a spirit of fear. Sometimes today in our society, mental health is a real thing. It's a real thing with our young people. Even though we know that they're capable and able, but their mental capacity gets wind up sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And they get a, a little an anxious about what they've been called to do. And sometimes as a mother, when you can't help them in that area, you got to call on the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord will put some people in their path to lead them on the way. I have several good friends in the faith that mentor my children, teach them, talk to them, encourage them that they can run on to see what the end gonna be. Paul was that person to Timothy this morning. The Bible says, it says that God had not given him a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. Sound mind is mental capacity. Yeah. Our children, our young people are dealing with some mental situations yeah. today. Yeah. Now back in the day, we didn't think nothing, you know, you just press on, you just keep it moving. But today, it shakes them sometimes a little bit more than it seemed to do us. Yeah. Yeah. And they need some encouragement. So, so here, Timothy gets some God in the council. Mm -hmm. Counseling is okay if you need it, okay? So here Timothy says that because I know your grandmother and I know your mother, I can see that same faith in you. So he encouraged him to be, to go on about what God had called him to do. He said, I'm reminded to stir up the gift of God which is in you. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So as a faithful mother, that's encouraging. That lets me know that God hears me, that God hears the faithful mother. You may not can tell your child what direction to go, but God will send somebody. God will put somebody in their pathway to remind them where they come from, to remind them of what is putting them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will, depart, they will not depart from it. Now, old don't necessarily mean age. Old means mature. When they're mature, they will not depart. So they got to get mature. How do they get mature? They got to renew their mind in the word. So if we can't, as mothers, always re get that response, we pray and ask God to send somebody, to send somebody that will speak into their life, that they will know that they're great, that they're head and not the tail, that they're above and not beneath. So because of the faithful grandmother and the faithful mother, Timothy is blessed, amen. amen. Timothy is blessed. Whenever God speaks and hears the mother, the children benefit. Whenever God speaks to the mother, the children benefit. Because you don't hear about a mother, what reference a mother is a child. Otherwise, she's a woman. Okay? Otherwise, she's a woman. So whenever you're talking about a mother, you're talking about a child. Okay? Whenever you're talking about a child, you're talking about a mother. You know, back in the day, they would say, hey, if you talked about my mother, I'm going, hey, you don't talk about my mama because you're talking about me. Okay? And I'm telling you, you don't talk about my child because you're talking about me. Okay? That's the way we roll. That's the way it is. So God sees the faithful mother. So first lady, what are you saying? I'm coming to a close. I like saying that. I'm, whatever state of motherhood you find yourself in, I want you to know that God sees you. That goes back to our foundational scripture. He hears the cries of the righteous. 
he, 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 the Bible says that he look on them, that he sees us, that he hears us. So whatever state of motherhood you find yourself in, know that God sees you. God sees you and he will perfect, this is one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 138 and 8, the Lord will perfect all that concerns me. Thou mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of thine hand. That's talking about us. Because y'all know back in Genesis, we were, how did he create man? He, he, in the dust with his hand. That means us. So when he says that, I said, Lord, that means me. You said that you will perfect all that concerns me. And all means all. I don't know what it means to you, but it means all to me. He will perfect all that concerns us. So we can rest assured that God sees you, dear mother. Whatever state of motherhood you find yourself in, God sees you. He's able to heal and deliver. He's able to answer your prayer. So please know, if you're not a mother, you know some mothers, okay? And you can remind them, when you see that single mother, remind her that God sees her. When you see that barren mother, you remind her that God sees her. When you see that mourning mother that wants to give up because her time is coming, you remind her that God sees her. And when you see that faithful mother, you remind her and the grandmother that God sees them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Therefore, if you want to know if you think that how, I know God sees me, but how can I see God? Mm. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. On, because we gotta go by the cross. That's right. We gotta go by the cross. Why do we have to go by the cross every time you're standing up here in the pool pit? It's because it's only by Jesus that you can come in. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father except by him. So we have to go by the cross because it was at the cross where Jesus died for our sins. So if you are perplexed about being seen, but more so about seeing God, you want to go to the cross. It's simple as A, B, and C. A, you accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you need saving. B, you believe that Jesus died on the cross on the third day and got up on the third day and that he is the Son of God and he died for our sins. C, you confess that he is and you tell somebody about it. A, B, C. As simple as that and you will be accepted in and you will know that you know, you can rest assured that not only does God see you, that he hears you and that you will see him. I'm going to turn it over to the leadership of this house. I thank you so much for this opportunity. I am not a preacher. I'm a person that loved the Lord and that's not ashamed of the gospel. For it's power to them that believe. Come on, stand up on your feet this morning. Amen. Thank God for the word this morning. God sees you. First lady spoke with them. Single mothers, amen, God bless you. All single mothers in the house, God is on your side, amen. She spoke, amen, to the barren mother, amen, that woman who was like Hannah. And then she talked to, to the woman who, amen, is mourning mother, that mother, amen, that like, like Ruth has lost a child. But the beauty of it, she spoke to the faithful mother, amen, Lois and Eunice, we come to Timothy, amen, and we praise God this morning that I believe that every mother has been covered this morning. But the one she didn't speak to was the unsaved mother. The one may not know who Jesus is. One who may have not allowed him to become Lord and Savior. And so this morning we want to give an opportunity, maybe somebody in the room, Amen. Mother, father, boy, girl, whatever, whatever you may be, that you're not born again this morning. Scripture teaches us, according to Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th verse, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has risen him from the grave, you shall be saved. 
Amen. The Bible teaches us that confession is made with the mouth, but with the heart is believing unto salvation. And so this morning, amen, we want to make sure that everyone in this room, if you don't know who Jesus is, Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. And he's knocking and said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man would hear my voice, allow me to come in. He says, I'll sit down with you. Like First Lady just talked about all his mothers. He sits down with you and he will soak with you and you soak with him. And so this morning, we want to give that opportunity. If there's anyone in this room that's not born again, now is the time, now is the opportunity. Maybe somebody in this room, amen, want to be part of Carrie's Baptist Church, amen. We're doing great things here. God has called us out to develop disciples of all ages, teaching them to know they're born of the Spirit of God and all his promises belong unto them. So the doors are open this morning, amen. Will you come and be a part? Father, we are grateful again this morning. We're grateful, Lord God, for... First of all, God, the message and the messenger. Lord, thank you that there is something in your word that comforts all of us during times of loss, during times of timidness, during times of singleness, during times of faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for the word this morning. What a rich word. We pray in Jesus' name, God, that everything that Miss Merlin has poured out this morning, God, you pour it back into her. Lord, let her know that her giving this morning was not in vain. But God, the hearts of your people have been encouraged to run on and see what the end is going to be. We are grateful this morning that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor have been into man's heart what you prepare for your people. But God, it's through your spirit. And we pray, God, to breathe afresh in this place. Everything that's dead and dormant, Lord God, quicken it and waken it up that, God, it would be about your business. We honor you and praise you, Lord God, just for an opportunity to serve in the ministry you have called us out in. Now, Father, be glorified, God, every, every mother in the room. God, you've already ministered to their heart. We pray the word of God has fell on good ground. You plant one plant, one waters, but it's you who gives the increase, Lord God. Your word said you watch it over to perform it. And so, Father, I believe by faith, God, that every word that's been spoken this morning by our first lady, Lord God, the word has been received on good ground. God, you're a God of comfort. You're a God of healing. You're a God of deliverance. You're a God of salvation. You're a God of provision. You're able to do all but fail. So we worship you and praise you this morning for that. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we love you and we thank you. And we honor you for all that you're doing and all that you will say you will do. And we give your name the glory, the honor, the praises. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen, amen, amen. You can have your seats. Amen. We're going to prepare ourselves this morning for our Holy Communion. If everyone, I hope everyone has, amen, a... Uh, condiments amen if you don't have one brother JJ will make sure you you get uh, you get one this morning amen I'm gonna ask Deacon Combs he would come forward amen and give us our scripture this morning and after that amen we'll have our time of communion one with another let the church say amen 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 our scripture will be coming from 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 32 in the Amplified Version. For I receive from the Lord himself that instruction which I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is, represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. In the same way, after supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ, and only when he has done so 
should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. That careless and unworthy participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. But if we evaluated and judged ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we would not be judged. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correction so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Combs, amen, for that reading, amen. I'm going to ask if you can stand, please stand this morning. If you can't, we understand, but if you can stand, just a moment of your time, we're going to prepare ourselves, amen, for our time of communion. And we know according to the scripture, we take it from the scripture where Jesus is in the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, 26th verse, and he is with his disciples, and all of us who are believers understand that Jesus is soon to depart, but before he's preparing the part, amen, he wanted to sit down and establish a covenant with his believers. Yes. During that time, the Bible says that Jesus, he took the bread, amen, he blessed it, he gave thanks, he said, take, eat, this is my body. Let us all eat together. Likewise, the scripture goes on to tell us that he took the cup, he gave thanks unto his father, amen, give it to them, saying, Drank ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Let us all drink together. Well, Father, once again, we are grateful, Lord God, that you have allowed us to come together as a body of believers. God, just to celebrate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you, God, if, if it had not been for the blood, if it had not been for the death, Lord God, we would have no remission of sins. But we thank you, Lord God, that we don't stand before you this morning con condemned. We, come, we stand, Lord God, knowing that we are loved by you. Thank you, Father, for our time together on this morning. Thank you, Father God, for the word that's come forth. Thank you for the songs that's been sung. Thank you for the presentations that was given. But most of all, God, thank you for your presence. For in your presence there is a fullness of joy. And at your right hand there is pleasure for more. We honor you and praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, choir, bless us. Amen. Give us our closing, closing selection as we prepare, amen, to leave this place. May the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, let it rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, I pray that you go before us, tear down what needs to be torn down, build up what needs to be built up, and we'll forever give your name the glory, the honor, the praises. In Jesus' name, amen.